Welcome back to Smile and V Immigration News. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. In this video, we are going to talk about USCIS new updates regarding green card holders. If you are interested in this topic, please watch to the end of the update. Let's jump into the video. There have been some updates from the USCIS regarding those green card holders who are applying for the removal of conditions from their green card. There will be changes to the type of documents that would offered to the applicant for proving their extension as a conditional green card holder and also there will be changes expected from the CBP as they will be questioning more conditional green card holders on their return to the states from various other places. Besides, for people who are applying for citizenship on the basis of their marriage to citizen of the United States, however, if they are currently divorced, there are some very interesting things that are taking place in those interviews for citizenship as well. If those people for the conditional green card removal on the basis of their marriage, however, divorce currently, they can file for a waiver based on a good faith marriage. Interested to know more? Let's learn all about this in detail. Usually, those applicants who are having a conditional green card for cases such as marriage, EB5, etc. They have to renew it and maximum extension that they can get is 18 months. However, as per the latest from the USCIS, this extension is now increased to 2 years, 24 months. This is certainly great news indeed. Such an extension will be great for those traveling individuals who can't return quickly or for employment verification purposes. And hence, such a change will be extremely crucial. So how will this change come into effect? When applicants filing to remove the conditions from the green card, they will need to file for conditional removal form I-751. It is when they are filing this on the basis of marriage 90 days before the visa expires, or if they are filing for an extension of green card because they filed an application form I-1 for EB-5 application. Also, 90 days before the visa expiration, the applicants usually get a receipt, which takes generally about six weeks to receive it. Such a receipt would mean that the visa status will be extended automatically by 18 months. However, effective last week, such an extension will now be for 24 months. As for the USCIS, Conditional permanent residents who file from I-1, I-751 or from I-829 currently will receive an invoice notification which can be provided with their form I-551 permanent resident card, also known as green card, as proof of prolonged status for up to 24 months past the expiration date on their green card while their case with USCIS is still pending. Keep in mind that if an applicant is a holder of a conditional green card and they have a plan to stay outside the state for more than a year, they will still need to file for a permanent they will still need to file for a permit to enter the state again. In other words, if an applicant knows in advance that they will be staying outside the state for more than a year and currently reside in the US, they can file their permit to re enter the state on form. I-131, which is an application for travel document. Now, the question is, what can happen if someone files or have filed this extension before the effective dates of change? Well, they don't need to worry. As USCIS announced, they will also be sending updates received letters to qualified conditional permanent residents who filed their form I-751 or from I-829 on time before September 4th and whose cases are still pending. Those receipts notes will also serve as proof continuous status for next 24 months after their green card expires. This clearly means now the, the new extension period is 24 months for the applicants instead of the old law of 18 months. With this extension now, a lot of people will be authorized to work and travel in the state which will be certainly offer them a relief and a lot of joy for sure if an applicant has filed this form then he can stay outside the u.s for a maximum period of two years why this is important the reason being is if an applicant received a two-year extension for their i from 
I-751, and then the applicants done that. They will be staying abroad for over a year. They will be they will be then filing a re-entry permit in the states, and they don't they won't need to worry about returning, even if their extension period is eighteen months is over, because now the new law the new rule for extension is twenty four months. However, if an applicant doesn't have a re-entry permit and they are staying outside the states for more than a year, he or she might face issues in returning to the states. In such cases, those applicants need to have sufficient evidence to prove why they couldn't return before the year expired. In most cases, the CBP officer will consider their case that will allow them to enter the state. A few other changes that have taken place regarding the conditional residents who are traveling abroad and returning to the state but one needs to keep in mind that few people filing for such a removal might not be staying together however are still filing for this removal as if they are staying together it can happen because either they have no idea that they can file for divorce or because they didn't get sufficient sign since they filed for such a removal together and now they are finding issue in their marital relationship. Of late, New York, Chicago, and LAX entry ports, CBS officers questioned those green card holders under their conditional returning status, returning from abroad. There were cases where these people had to face a lot of questions on their relationship, such as whether or not they are living with their spouses, when did they see their spouse for the last time, etc. It was like a green card interview in the shortest format. The reason for this was to verify whether those who are filing for a conditional removal under the marriage are doing so while they are still entitled or eligible for doing it. As a result, one can still file for divorce even if they are, they are not with their spouse and can still file for a waiver and get their green card without their spouse, who is a U.S. citizen. If they are not doing this way and the officers find out they are not staying together, the applicants may be at risk of losing their green card. There have, there have been cases like this where an applicant returns to the state filed an application with their spouse. However, upon inquiry, the CBP officers found out that the couple were staying together for over six months. As a result, the conditional green card was taken away from the individual and their entry to the state were held back asking them to, to provide sufficient evidence or argument as to why they should be allowed a green card. So applicants applying under these circumstances need to be careful. They should carry sufficient documents to prove that they are eligible for such a conditional removal, especially based on family circumstances. People have filed for citizenship on the basis of their marriage to a U.S. citizen. Even if their marital relationship doesn't exist any longer, they can be questioned about their relationship even though they apply for citizenship several years later. Again, if the applicant is inquired by the CBF department and he doesn't answer them satisfactorily, their green card can be cancelled. They might need to appear for a hearing to argue for their case. Hopefully, the details and information presented in this video is helpful. Please share this information with family and friends who may need it. You can also help us spread the news by sharing it on all social media. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit on the notification bell for more immigration updates. Bye!